I am so <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> What's great? And also to be, you always get mad when I say your age. That's to be, be higher, twenty so. plus forty, <laughs> and to hear from the doctor, you know, your cardiac risk ratio is five point eight. How can you not say, "Oh my God, give me the pill, give me the potion"? Right. So yeah. I really, really commend you for stopping, taking a breath, mm -hmm. and saying, "Okay." I'm gonna try this through diet as opposed to saying, give me the pill, give me the pill, because it's scary when you read all those numbers, like, oh my God, I have to get a hold right, of this. Right. Hello, my honeys, it is Emmy, and we have Healthy Mummy here <laughs> to give her cholesterol update after doing SOS for, how long has it even been? I mean, August, September, October, November, we're heading into five months yeah. or so yeah. on an SOS lifestyle. So if you are not familiar with what is going on here, we have a whole Healthy Mummy series and watch all the videos before you dive into this one, but we are going to get all into mom's story and the cats are running around. <laughs> it's mayhem here. <laughs> If you haven't been up to date about what's going on with the Healthy Mummy series, make sure you watch all the videos. Healthy Mummy has been doing my Slim on Starch program. And the main reason why we did it, as you can see, she is not, you know, she if she turns sideways, she disappears. So she didn't come to this for the sake of weight loss. We had some surprise weight loss happen, which was really exciting. Wait about a month ago was 145. We went into it for the sake of your cholesterol and yeah. also to get rid of just that feeling of heaviness. Right. And you were already eating a very healthy vegan diet. Mm -hmm. So this morning she stepped on the scale and I said, don't look. And I took a picture and do you want to see what it said? Yep, drum roll. Here's what it said. <gasps> You're kidding. <laughs> Those are your feet. Wow. <laughs> I haven't seen that in decades. Uh, but she came to this more so for the sake of her cholesterol, having high cholesterol. So we have some very exciting results. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the background with you and in, in your cholesterol and mm -hmm. what it has been like? Mm -hmm. um, when I probably turned maybe 30, probably when I had my cholesterol start to be checked, it was in the 200-ish range. And it sort of hung there for a long time. There's a period of time where I was on Lipitor for a little while. Then I got it back down, so I came off Lipitor. And then um, when I went back to the doctors in July for my annual physical, it was very high. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised. Mm -hmm. Especially because, you know, we've been eating vegan, you've been vegan at least five years. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, I went vegan. Isn't that supposed to take it? You know, I washed forks over knives, yeah. all their cholesterol numbers went down. Right. Why is mine going down? Right. And what was so funny about mom is you would say to me over and over again, it's genetic, it's genetic, it's genetic. And it's genetic. I've been vegan for five years, you know, it's it's just genetic. Yeah. And so I said, humor me, mm -hmm. and I want you to strictly follow my program and let's see, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Now, why did we decide to really go in on SOS? Because what did, what did your doctor say? She said, I'll give you three months, um, and if you can get it down by diet alone, then we'll, we'll reassess. Mm -hmm. So she was on board at least. Mm -hmm. Now cholesterol takes about three to six months to be adjusted when you do adjust your diet. And for women, it is a little bit longer. So I was a little bit nervous when you went to get your results. So was I. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, oh no, you know, and your cholesterol had been stubborn for so long. Yeah. It was always something that you'd struggled with, mm -hmm. even when you were, and you'd been vegan for five years. Yes. You know, it was just, that was that one thing. Yeah. And looking at her, you wouldn't even think that there are any issues with her cholesterol yeah. because like I said, she looks healthy. She is very healthy and exercises. Mm -hmm. So I was honestly really interested to sort of use you as the science yeah. experiment yeah. to see what happens when you historically struggle with your cholesterol, what happens? Mm -hmm. Um, so you went on SOS at the beginning of August Correct. and let's read your cholesterol numbers from, from before you started. Okay. You start with the basic cholesterol, which should be 140 to 200. Back in July, my cholesterol was 265. 
Um, my triglycerides were also high. They should be uh, no higher than 149. They were 182. Uh, my HDL, which was, has always been okay, you know, this good cholesterol at 52. Um, my LDL, the bad cholesterol, which should be no higher than 129, was 177. And my cardiac risk ratio, which really kind of scared me, is the thing that went pretty high. It should be no higher than 4.4, and it was 5.1. Mm -hmm. And I come from a, a family of cardiac disease. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when we hear cardiac risk ratio, we were like, well, what is, that's a lot of words put together. Basically, how likely are you of having a cardiac episode, a heart attack, mm -hmm. you know, something that could really be life threatening. And we want to get you to the point of being heart attack proof, we would say, when we look at your numbers. Um, so she went on SOS and we can talk about that and you've watched the whole series so you know what that has looked like but I also am gonna ask you some questions from some people currently oh, on okay. SOS uh, but after three months or so on SOS I received a text message <laughs> from yours truly it's like in uh, the office when Michael texts 911 Michael you texted me 911 Call me, yes. all in caps. Do you know what 911 means? I learned a while back that if I don't text 911, people will not return my calls. <laughs> that was like what had happened. It was, I got my cholesterol results with all these exclamation points. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> and why don't you read them? Right. Well, they came in, I had to go sit down and open it because I was so nervous. But my cholesterol, which was 265, went down to 197. My triglycerides, which were 177, went down to 128. Um, and my LDL went down to 119. And my cardiac risk ratio went down to 3.8. Woohoo! <laughs> so this means that all of her numbers went from out of range to into the normal range. Right. Within about three months of diet alone, yeah. no medications, no right. statin, no crazy exercise, no surgeries, nothing, mm -hmm. simply through a slim on starch diet. Right. And not through counting calories, tracking macros, crazy recipes. No, restricting. Mm -mm, none okay. of that. Just eating whole yeah. plant foods. Right. Food is medicine and food is healing mm -hmm. and we don't have to do anything drastic and the body is incredibly forgiving mm -hmm. and it can heal. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dean Ornish was the first doctor to reverse coronary artery disease through diet alone. Amazing. It's amazing. And, and yeah. you know, we so often think because of today's, the way that the medical industry is today, that well, I gotta find the pillar potion. This is, right. I, genetically I was given this, so fix me with a pillar potion. Right, right. And I did have to, you sort of have to be on top of your own health care because my doctor had already gone ahead and ordered my Lipitor. Um, and I had to remind her that that wasn't the plan. So she was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. We went back to the plan. Mm -hmm. And then she was amazed herself. She said, wow, keep doing what you're doing. No meds for now. Yeah, so yeah. it's fantastic news, and we are very, very proud. Yeah, proud. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I am so proud of you. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, well, and and also, to be... You always get mad when I say your age. That's to be, be 20 soon. plus 40, <laughs> and to hear from the doctor, or to read those results, you know, your cardiac risk ratio is 5.8, how can you not say... Oh my God, give me the pill, give me the potion. Right. So yeah. I really, really commend you for stopping, taking a breath mm -hmm. and saying, okay, I'm going to try this through diet as opposed to saying, give me the pill, give me the pill. Cause it's scary when you read all those numbers, like, oh my God, I have to get a hold right. of this. Right. Well, I mean, I am in the business and I know what's a acute real emergency and what are things that can wait and take time. Um, and this is one of them and it was worth it. It was worth the wait. Yeah. How did you muster up that bravery to not just go for a pill or a potion? Um, because I've been down this road before. I, I didn't get this way quickly, and it's not a problem that's going to be fixed quickly. Even if you take medication, it's going to be several months before that cholesterol comes down. Um, but I'm just, a, I am really amazed. Amazed. Yeah, so from following Slim mm -hmm. on Starch, you got those results in November, early November, right. or mid-November, I would November yeah. 16th. Okay, yeah. so November 16th, you got those results, right. and it's been a month. 
Mm -hmm. So you were strictly SOS until that time. Right. So let's talk about what has happened since then. I don't right. really know what has happened since right. then. Right, Emily's gone. She's gone from the scene. Um, I have maintained completely what I was eating like when you were home, without a doubt. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Well, dad texted me on Friday because every other weekend it's pizza night and they'll make homemade pizza. Um, and she has been having that following SOS. And he texted me that you made your potato pizza. Yeah, so. potato cauliflower crust. Yeah. It's so good. You know, <laughs> you think, oh, God, I don't want to do it. It takes no time at all. And you're so glad you've done it when mm -hmm. it comes time to eat it. It's so easy. It's so delicious. And it um, keeps you on the track. Well, I remember a few years ago, um, we had you tighten up your diet and I ran a little experiment with you mm -hmm. and it didn't last. No. So what, what's making this last this time around? Um, it's a good question. I think sometimes the whole process is a journey and there's a little trial and error. And I'm, part of my particular problem, I think, was, was um, dairy replacements because I have fixated in my head that I needed that calcium because I have osteoporosis and I way overdid it on the soy milk and the soy products and, um, and really didn't, I neglected the whole food, I'm so glad I did the program, um, the whole food um, approach, mm -hmm. which is key, it's everything. Mm. That's interesting. I didn't realize, well, you kind of, so she does have osteoporosis and that's why having some fortified soy products is beneficial because they're fortified with calcium. Mm -hmm. So things like soy milk are great. Hi, little tiger. Mm -hmm. Things like soy milk are great when you do have osteoporosis because there's the calcium in there. But you were going to town on that soy yeah. milk. Right, to town. Mm -hmm. Because I was a big milk drinker prior um, and then I just replaced it with that and I kept thinking why am I getting so big um, <laughs> you, you were know, hardly now big. it seems completely clear to me but then it didn't because mm. I was that was a different um, food lifestyle for me and now I've taken the next step mm. that's a frustrating place to be in when you're like it 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 wasn't clear to me and, and now it is yeah what was it like when you were experiencing why is this happening i eat so healthy right right it wasn't you did i i will just say you were eating a very healthy diet when your cholesterol was high right but if we had like dad's um, yummy bean soup he'd bring out the bag of tortilla chips you know and i'd go to town on that and i just don't anymore I don't. dad is such an enabler oh he's terrible <laughs> Terrible. He doesn't mean to be, but you know, he can have that and it doesn't affect him. Mm -hmm. um, I, can't. I can't. Yeah. So my dad is also, he's a starchy. He does the whole thing. Um, he eats like us, but he grants himself, I would say he's like 80, 20, yeah. whereas now you're like 99, one. Right. You kind of have to be because right. your cholesterol, uh, but dad can, gr he grants himself that wiggle room. He was big for such a long time mm -hmm. that when he became smaller and now that he's in a normal size body, people were like, whoa, mm -hmm. you are what, like our Nana used to be comment that he looked sick because mm -hmm. he was so thin when really his, he's like barely in the healthy weight range. So he yeah. likes to have a little bit more weight on him. Mm -hmm. So he can have the tortilla chips. He'll have the peanut butter crackers right. um, and having that stuff around with stuff he dipped into. Yeah. The environment hasn't changed. Dad is no. still eating his tortilla chips. He's still, you know, whatever. Right. So what has changed with well, you? Interestingly, last night, um, it just doesn't taste this, it doesn't appeal to me in the same way once you step away from it for a, a significant amount of time. It, I don't know if it's part of the addicted, addiction to it or the hand to mouth um, habit, but I just don't feel like I need it anymore. The soup alone isn't enough for me. So instead of going for the chips, I put rice in the soup. Mm -hmm. You know, because I wake up the next morning too hungry mm -hmm. right out of the gate. So I learn. Mm -hmm. No, but I don't go straight for that um, junk. Mm -hmm. Was Process did you guys food. have? You said last night. Did you have the yeah. soup last night? We had it like his leftovers last mm -hmm. night. And yeah. Dad took out the tortilla chips Correct. that say two dollars only on the right. Front. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. And I think I could, I used to and could eat that whole or half that bag. Anybody could, and that is the pleasure trap that Dr. Lyle talks about. That that food, it's. It's deep fried tortillas 
and God knows how many calories per pound, it is salty, there's the fat. Any human is gonna go to town on that right. food. What's so important in these situations is that you do not go in vulnerable. Right. So if you sit that sit down at that table and you don't have a plan and you are hungry, 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 you bet your bottom dollar you're gonna be dipping your hands into those chips. For sure. There's two things that you have to do. Make sure you do not go into these situations, do not sit down at that table super hungry right. because then it's get it in me. Yeah. And then also you gotta replace it. So you said you replace it with the rice. You right. have a nice, big, hearty mm -hmm. meal yeah. that you really feel satisfied at the mm -hmm. end of. Correct. Now I'm going to ask you some questions okay. from some current Slim on Starch clients who have been following the journey. Oh, jeez. All right, so let's see here. You've answered this one before, but I will ask again. Okay. Maria is an oncology NP, and she's curious what your nursing specialty is. Okay, well right now I'm just a, a general uh, PD nurse on a hospital in the Mass General Brigham system, and we are very busy. So right now she's a pediatric nurse. What, where else have you worked? What other floors and um, what? Oh, time? I have worked uh, at Children's Hospital in Boston on neurosurgery. I have worked at Brigham and Women's Hospital on GYN Oncology, and I did a long stint in college health. All righty. What type of meals does Healthy Mummy bring for breakfast and lunch at work? Okay, it, it, very easy. I bring my oats that have, I uh, use quick oats that have flaxseed and cinnamon mixed in. They're just in a jar in the cabinet, always at the ready. And um, I just mix that up with some um, water. And on the side, I bring shredded carrots and frozen blueberries, which I just pop the blueberries in the microwave. That's my breakfast. And then lunch is uh, my Buddha bowls, you know, which either the starch is, um, is quinoa or rice or um, farro and then assorted vegetables that I've prepared. And um, I'm running out, so important, so important to have what you need in the fridge and freezer. I'm running out and I knew it's gonna be here today and then I've gotta work the next couple of days. So I went to Trader Joe's this morning and got all my frozen stuff that I can just make quickly um, tonight or tomorrow night when I get home. I have to say, the number one determinant of success on this program and in anything you do is two things. Preparation and consistency. Agreed. So preparation is by far in the SOS program, the number one determinant of success mm -hmm. is those that have, this is my prep day, non-negotiable mm -hmm. and making it like a religion. Yeah. Like every Sunday, Sunday you go to church, church. every <laughs> Sunday you do your prep yeah. and it's a non-negotiable, put it in your calendar if you need to, mm -hmm. because a Sunday well spent brings a week's content. Yes. And if you are prepared, all you got to do is pop it in right. and that's that Easy. and also I have decided my primary food as of late is I'm relearning Spanish and I bought this online course and I'm doing the whole thing and what the teacher said he said the people that know this language it's not that they're smarter than you the people that have learned this language they're not smarter than you they're more consistent than you and I go Okay, um, challenge accepted, yeah. but no, that really is the truth. Being consistent is the name of the game okay. here. Amy says, I know your mom was pretty trim going into this cholesterol experiment, um, and I'm excited to hear about her numbers. I'm also interested in the total weight loss. Mm -hmm. If she ever thought she could get to that new level and how she feels physically and mentally at it. All right, so let's start there. Okay. So how are you feeling physically? Uh, how are you feeling physically? I feel... Wonderful. Tremendous. The fact that, and all you women who struggle with this will know, the fact that that feeling of the um, inflatable <laughs> <laughs> life tube, inner tube around your waist is gone um, is a great, great feeling. Um, and I feel great, light, healthy. Um, I feel well. How do you feel mentally? Um, I feel less encumbered less sluggish. It was vocabulary. Uh -huh. um, I sleep better, um, less um, anxiety about, oh shoot, what do I have for lunch today? Or, uh, um, my f everything makes life easier. All right, Amy also asks, uh, what foods in particular did you get rid of? Oh, well the first thing that always comes to mind is my soy milk. <laughs> You know, I, uh, she was about 90% soy milk at the start of the experiment. Because I loved lattes and I would, I would go through like three half gallons of soy milk, vanilla soy milk a week. It was bad. Um, nut butters, I don't um, have any more. 
um, pasta, which, you know, it's interesting. That I had that um, little bit of pasta. It didn't really sit that well with me. I didn't interesting. feel as well. So she came over for dinner last weekend, a couple weekends ago. Mm -hmm. And I said, listen, I'm going to teach you how to start reincorporating this stuff back in. Mm -hmm. Because pasta was like your number one. You yeah. love pasta. And yeah. cholesterol wise, I feel confident that we can incorporate back in. So when she came over, that was the first time she had had it. And I taught her, I said, okay, this is what the next month is going to look like yeah. with your incorporation of pasta. Yeah. And we didn't really follow up about it. Yeah. You're, when I had dinner here, everything was great. And then we went home and dad had made it. So I had to you know, do what yeah. you told me to do. And then the next morning, I'm like, I don't feel as good as I usually do. Interesting. Yeah, um, yeah, it was like, and not so. I didn't feel bad, but I, it, for me, it was an awakening of how well I feel the other way. Mm. So I don't necessarily feel as if I, you know, absolutely need it like I thought I did. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's the truth. Crazy. That's the truth. Maybe well, I'm, yeah. I'm glad that I have taught you how to incorporate it back yeah. in should, yeah. should you choose to do so because right. allowance is a really interesting thing mm -hmm. when you grant yourself allowance to do these things. You know, I've taught you if you want to do it, this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And when you grant yourself that allowance, you go, oh, well, I guess I don't really want it that much. Right. But if it's that big red button, pasta, pasta, I can't have pasta, I can't have pasta, then right. you would want it like crazy. True, true, true. Well, maybe the holidays kind of will talk about yeah. cocktails. <laughs> We'll see how that goes. <laughs> what was it like because uh, peanut butter crackers was like the 4 p.m. snack or the bowl of cereal when you would get home from work. Yeah. So something that one of my clients asked me today, she said she's sort of feeling like she's grieving these foods. Well, yeah. So, yeah, talk about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's okay and that's a really good observation because I think it's true. I, for me, they were tied to um, good good times, you know, that four o'clock in the afternoon, the kids would have come home from school, it'd be pre-dinner, everything would be sort of set and I could sit for a minute and I would watch Oprah. So there was pleasure associated with that or things that I enjoyed doing were associated with that. Um, I mean, some cereal brings me back to my childhood, big time. Um, so it gives me a sense of um, warmth and comfort, I think, the memories of it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't, um, you can't sub it with something else. You have learned so, so much Smart. because something that we ask our clients when they experience what you were saying is what emotion are you trying to create through that food? Yeah. Through the cereal, it was the comfort. Through the latte, it was the relaxation. So let's keep that feeling. Let's just replace the substance mm -hmm. and not have it be a substance that's going to get you into trouble. Right. So with that feeling of the relaxation, I know that in the morning, she is very, you are very adamant about your meditation. She mm -hmm. meditates every single morning mm -hmm. and you would do it with your latte. Right. So now we just replace it so that you still get that feeling of warmth and comfort it's just a different substance that right. you're using to get it yeah, and that was something I never considered and now I'll find when I come home from work if it's been a very stressful day and I can feel myself starting to you know mm. get peanut butter crackery um, and I always ask myself would I eat vegetables am I hungry or am I frustrated am I hungry am I anxious um, and it's amazing how that one simple question will get you back on track. Mm -hmm. The power of the pause. If you find yourself getting like that, oh, I wanna, I'm feeling peckish, oh, just stop for two seconds, right. set a timer on your phone for 30 seconds and just pause and ask yourself, would I eat a healthy meal right now? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then you're not I'm truly hungry. hungry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I actually just gave a client an assignment who she gets home from work and she says, she reminded me so much of you. Mm -hmm. She said, that's when the damage is done, 4 yeah. p.m. when I get home from work. So I've just given her the assignment that on her way home from work, so if you're watching this and you're like, that is when I do the damage when I get home from work, mm -hmm. on the way home from work, you eat a piece of fruit, non-negotiable, and that is part of your routine now. Mm -hmm. So for you watching this, that's struggling with that. Can I say bit. something about that as well, the four o'clock? I pushed everything ahead. And if you can't, if your lunch hour is noontime, there's nothing you can do about it, that's okay. But I pushed everything ahead. I used to get up and have breakfast, then I was starving by 10, then I have lunch at noon, then I was starving at four. So now I just push it all ahead. I have lunch, like uh, breakfast like at 9.30, I have lunch at like 1.30, and then that takes care of the four o'clock. Many people get up and have breakfast and mm -hmm. they're not even hungry. Mm -hmm. So don't eat until you're hungry. If you're not hungry, you shouldn't be eating. Right. And so when you get, but the thing is when you turn on that hunger, once you start eating, 
the floodgates have opened. So if you start eating at 7 a.m., then at 12 p.m. you're gonna be hungry for your right. lunch. But when you push it forward like right. that, you don't have breakfast till 9.30, well then you're not gonna have lunch. You don't have lunch till one or two o'clock. Right, and you're, I mean, you're not of the breakfast is your most important meal generation, where we were yeah. brought up to eat as soon as you get up. So the reason for that, that was actually a study done by the cereal industry, <laughs> wouldn't you know? Right. They wanted to sell their products, they go, hmm, how do we make it so that people need to eat breakfast? Right. All right, well, let's run a study. So they ran a study and they compared kids who had had breakfast before going to school to kids who had not had breakfast before going to school. Now, what we usually see coming from, I used to be a teacher coming from an education background. I have taught low SES kids who are kids who are low SES, who if they're not having breakfast before going to school, they're likely in a household that's not supportive. They're, right. they're in a household where they're not having reinforcement from what they're learning at school at home. Mm -hmm. And so kids that are of a lower SES tend not to get as great of grades in school because they don't have the at-home support. So what did they find in this study, which was supposed to test how, how much mm. does breakfast help you get good grades? They right. were just doing a test on SES right. and seeing how supportive, but anyway, why am I even talking about this? Because that breakfast is the most important meal of the day was taken way, way out, of out of context. Right. And so people end up eating when they're not even truly hungry. Right. All right, Amy also said, mm. Uh, she said, using your words, Emmy, something that I often say to clients is, is the juice worth the squeeze? So let me just explain this to you watching so you understand what I'm even talking about here. Is the juice worth the squeeze? So I have clients who they'll lose 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds. They get down to their ideal weight range and they go, but I want to lose another five. They're like, I'm at... 150, but I just always wanted to see 145 mm -hmm. on the scale. You know, I just, oh, if I could just get those five pounds. And I go, listen, I can, we can do it. I can get those five pounds off you, but is the juice worth the squeeze? I'm gonna make these dietary changes, but you might not like them. And so there's gonna be a little work you have to put in in order to get there. We can get you there, but it's gonna be a little bit of work. So with you, mm -hmm. you had to make some behavioral changes in order to get this outcome. Right. Was it worth it is basically what she's asking. Without a doubt. I'm not a real numbers on the scale person, so I can't, and I'm not criticizing that thought process. That's just not me. I don't, I don't even know what I weigh. I know how I feel and I know how my clothes fit, which is key. Um, but it was definitely, definitely worth it because I don't feel old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who wants to feel old? Nobody. You want to feel as well as you can for the age that you are. Um, so. It was definitely worth it. Yeah. You don't seem old. You don't look mm -hmm. old. You look fantastic. Oh, thank you. Oh, Amy says, thank your mom for running this experiment for all of us. My pleasure. All right. So if you want another video with Healthy Mommy, it's a great excuse for her to come over here. Yeah. The cats are going wild. We got things to take care of. So <laughs> leave a comment below. If you're still watching, what should the word be that they say if they're still watching? Last time it was faith. Hope. Hope. All right. Comment hope if you're still watching. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Woo!